Welcome to The Brainstorm, episode 85, talking about Amazon's buy for me. We've got Varshka, we've got Nick in the studio to break it down for us. Uh, Nick, am I starting with you or Varshka, are you setting this up for us? I will tee it up and then hand it off to Varshka. Um, so over the past few weeks, we've gotten incremental news in the agentic AI world, one of which is Amazon is deploying agentic capability to their marketplace. Um, this comes under what you described as buy for me. And an interesting twist, uh, they currently have Rufus, which is an agentic agent built within the marketplace. So allowing for help guidance when you're making a purchase on the Amazon marketplace. What buy for me is, is giving the capability to shop beyond Amazon, but with Amazon. So using Amazon's purchasing capability, but on different marketplaces. And I'll let Varshika kind of explain how this works in practice. Um, but you can think of you're going to Amazon and then you can actually purchase something on a different marketplace, but using kind of a one click checkout type of uh, purchasing agent. Yeah, and I see the I see the computer out there. Does that mean we're going to get a demo? And does this mean Amazon will just go buy stuff from Alibaba that is way yeah. cheaper? Possible. Oh, we can actually show the yeah. Let's uh, we'll we'll show the um, oh, example. Yeah, and um, yeah, just I, I guess you know this is something we've been talking about for a while which is, you know, agentic AI being able to price compare across the entire internet for you in seconds versus what, you know, most of us do today, which is do it ourselves. Um, and Amazon being able to deliver that to the consumer on its own marketplace, I think is extremely powerful and a shift in, you know, their strategy, which has been, you know, we're doing everything in-house. You purchase through our marketplace, um, you sign up, you list, you sell through our marketplace. We're the front end for both the business and the consumer. Now they're acting as, you know, an integrator of other marketplaces and retailers. So why I think this is really interesting, and we've spoken about this concept of like an AI purchasing agent before. And I think the first one was like Klarna. They were able to kind of aggregate across marketplaces. But you still, if you pick the marketplace you wanted to go with, say that was the cheapest, had your like your item in stock will arrive in like two days. I think the issue is you would still have to go to that third party side and then re put in all of your, whether it's your credit card information or like link your digital wallet. And that's just another step of like friction associated with the entire buying process versus like if you compare Amazon's button, it's great because most people are already using Amazon for a lot of their purchases. Now, if you want to go shop on a third party website, Amazon already has the payment details for you. So what this buy for me button does is it reduces that entire step of having to put in your details and like get your payment through on a third party side. You may or may not trust it, but you know, you trust Amazon. So I think that's like a huge, the fact that it's able to kind of take that entire like shopping process on the third party website and just summarize it into like one button is I think very valuable. Yeah. So this is really an extension of, Amazon's most valuable patent, which is the one click to pay. And so this is just, you know, you're call we're calling it AI and maybe it's enabled by AI, but this is a continuation of that patent just beyond the walled garden of Amazon's marketplace. Exactly. And I think it is a bit trivial in nature to say, oh, this is, you know, so innovative, like, yes, it is AI, but it is also, you know, kind of masking as just the one click checkout, but it is extremely important in understanding and being able to facilitate this type of transaction beyond the Amazon marketplace. Like that is extremely powerful. Like to your point, right? Like the one click checkout was probably one of the main reasons Amazon is Amazon, obviously tons of other reasons, but that was a very powerful moat in the early days of the internet because it reduced friction for shopping. And that's what the entire journey of marketplaces has been over the past, you know, m hundreds of years. And, and Varshik, I think would be a great time to show this, this chart that uh, you and I um, worked on, but you know, what we're doing here, and especially when it becomes agentic AI, we're, drastically reducing the friction in purchasing. And that's essentially what has been happening throughout the history of transactions and trading. And what you see is it takes less and less time 
to be able to purchase a good. And so you can see over time, you're talking about hours to be able to go out to a marketplace. You probably had to walk or horse and buggy, right? And you know, you then had to go barter and you didn't have uh, standardized currency. So all of this stuff took hours to do. Now you're just drastically reducing the friction in the process. And so your propensity to spend as a result, like if we could create another line, it would probably be, you know, GDP or GMV, gross merchandise volume of trades. And it would be going up in kind of an exponential curve because of this. What is the data point here for barter system? Like <laughs> how many hours are, are being spent bartering over, over goods here? I think in minutes it's about 480, but I think the cons, so, okay, very quickly barters. I think the idea is with barter system, you, it's like the double coincidence of wants. Like you have to have something that someone else wants and they also have to have something that you want. That's only when the barter can take place. A lot of our earlier, like, you know, errors are anecdotal evidence. Uh, and so they are like only estimates, but sort of zooming in on like the last few like eras, especially with like web and like mobile app. I think there's a lot of very important innovations. See, like in e-commerce, like search, that was like a huge part of like, okay, how do you get people like on the internet to like get to the products they want like faster? And then, so then they can like check out. And then I think with mobile app, you get these push notifications and that enable like an entire new era of like, okay, how can I have something that's location aware? Can I get like, you know, food delivery or can I get like something on my doorstep and get a notification that hey your package is here so um there's been a lot of like technology like innovation that has pushed like you know and reduced consumer friction over the past two decades and i think with ai of course this graph is only going to ever come down but i also think of uh, the reason why like the payments is like so important to the entire this entire like marketplace flywheel is that at the end of the day, if you're making like a purchase, it is going to be tied to financial information. It has to be tied to how do you like actually complete a transaction? You can come up with all the different ways on a marketplace of what's like the easiest, fastest, but it's only ever going to complete once you figure out the payments, which is why I think digital wallets and like AI purchasing agents are such like important players in this entire like marketplace AI like ecosystem that's going to come up. And even with this, if, you know, we're writing our current research around this, but if you were to extend out this graph and now talk about agentic app marketplaces, what does this new innovation agentic AI bring to the shopping experience? One, it brings kind of speed of search. So being able to go out there, cross compare across different marketplaces, but it also brings potentially domain expertise and knowledge to a transaction. And that will open up new markets for online spend. If you think about, you know, where has online marketplaces or online purchasing been underpenetrated within commerce? I think we could sit here and list off a few categories, but you think about autos, typically big ticket items where you need to go in person, you need to feel, you need to sit, you need to talk with an expert. They need to get you comfortable with that transaction. Now imagine you have an expert in your pocket or an expert with you at checkout in that digital assistant. It's context aware. It understands your purchasing history. It knows exactly what you like. It has all of the information on you. It has all information on the product, all of its, uh, you know, the competing products out there and is able to deliver you kind of peace of mind at, at, at purchase where typically or today a broker sits in that in that space, whether it be for, you know, autos, for a home, for all of these big ticket purchases. I think that's where this is going to now open up new markets is in that bigger tick, bigger ticket um, items. And I know this is Amazon uh, we're talking about and makes sense for them, but as we're entering this AI agent world, isn't this going to just become more commoditized in a sense. It's like, why wouldn't Apple pay do the same thing? It's like, you should already, it's like, if something's Apple pay, I'm 50% more likely to buy it just because you tap the button twice and you're done. Uh, same thing. It's like Visa or whatever credit card provider. It seems like this is just going to become table stakes. 
yeah. can hear, you can hear. Yeah, we uh, hear the background. <laughs> Maybe. Um, no, I think that's a, it's a great point. I do think this in a lot of ways resets the e-commerce playing field, because if you have open source models and this capability widely available to your point, why can't other players enter this space and offer an agentic shopping assistant or purchasing agent? That's absolutely correct. I think for us, it comes back to looking at what makes a marketplace today defensible. And it comes down to pricing inventory and speed of delivery. You're still going to need physical infrastructure to be able to support and uh, delight the consumer. So you need to have low pricing. You need to be able to offer all of the products and services that a consumer wants. And then you need to be able to deliver that product or service in the fastest, most efficient way to the end consumer. So that's why I think if you look at the space, the current e-commerce incumbents, Walmart, Amazon, they have this massive physical infrastructure distribution centers that are going to be extremely valuable when the UI, the UX becomes more commoditized. I don't know if you have any thoughts, but I think we're, we're, yeah, on, the we're, same, on, the yeah, we're on the same page. Yeah, it is interesting. This brings me back. I feel like one of the very first podcasts we did was with Chip Wilson of uh, Lululemon. And it's like at that time, there were all of these brands popping up kind of like faux Patagonia, like D to C. And I think most of them have fallen by the wayside, even after like short spurts of success, because they didn't have the in-person and the delight, the consumer capability or the really the logistics side of it. So there is more to it than just getting that initial bump of sales and being put on the map. The only other thing I would add is that when we talk about price, speed, and like inventory, like that's not just with this next era. It actually does go back like through history. Like if you think about, um, well, I know Nick alluded to it in the beginning, but if you think about like the barter system and then the introduction of like currency, that sort of made it like, you know, pricing a lot easier. You don't have to like, you know, haggle as much or like it kind of brought some level of like standardized standardization to things and then when you go to the department store era you sort of you know from like the local shops and the like ancient marketplaces where haggling was still and like you know negotiation was still like a cornerstone of pricing that kind of gets eliminated in like the department store era and there is like price transparency so these sort of pillars have like even and if you think about like the web native era like and mobile app era with Amazon in particular, like they were able to optimize their last mile delivery and get like, like you can order something on Amazon today and it'll be at your doorstep in the next like few hours at latest next day. Right. And all of that does come from innovation across these three pillars historically. So we're only going to see that continue in this next like AI era. And then I don't think we need to dive into it right now, but one of the big areas we were talking about is extending this to services, not just goods, and whether AI could be the, the enabler there. Yeah, I mean, well, if you don't want to dive into it, but we, we should a little bit. Um, I do think, yeah, on the services side, especially when you look at the mobile app marketplace era, we brought the internet with us in our pockets once we had iPhones and, and smartphones, and that unlocked this huge marketplace in services. You're talking about food delivery, you're talking about um, ride hailing, uh, Airbnb, all of these different services open up as a result of this innovation and this you know cost decline curve around being able to facilitate different transactions. And now I think when you get into the services space, again, it comes back to what does agentic AI unlock? Well, it unlocks knowledge at the point of purchase. And that is extremely important for services. Think about what it takes to plan a trip, what it takes to um, you know, buy a car, buy a car, all of these different, you know, services that are offered out there today. Um, I think this drastically reduces the friction in that process. I'm, you know, planning a trip over the summer and I've used AI a few times to be able to understand and, you know, be able to compare things that would have taken me, you know, a long time prior to having these, um, you know, all knowing AI, uh, available. Um, I think it's just, you know, 
you really have to understand what exactly this unlocks and its knowledge and knowledge is extremely powerful in the services industry. And that today is facilitated by humans. Um, not saying that it's going away entirely, but being able to deliver more knowledge is always going to be extremely sure. valuable. Democratizing access to that knowledge. Right. Right. All right. And so Nick, happy birthday. Thank how do you. you stay? How do you stay looking so young at, at, 47 i shave <laughs> uh, it's yeah. the lighting it's the lighting. it's the lighting yeah ben our uh, producer gives us great great lighting never have an issue with it terrific all right <laughs> thank you varshka and nick for for diving into uh buy for me and let's see if this means we can get the dupes off of amazon for even cheaper ben just gave me a side eye from the room over the lighting it's a it's a fun game we play before the show um all right thank you everyone thank you